Hi guys, uh, a super quick video just to mention the fact that from now on I, I'm going to move to everything from into Unreal uh, 5 and the reason, there are different reasons why I want to do that. The first of all of course the cool factor, we have a much better UI, much cleaner, they got rid of the big of, of the big button so the UI it's a bit you know bigger, the, the, the area where you work. Uh, the other reason is that I think yesterday or a couple of days ago Epic Games has published a video with a blue dragon where they were showing you know control rig and procedural animation with it and then I've noticed one thing when 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 they were showing it and this thing it's a biggie for me um, and it's this panel here so the panel functions it looks to me that um, you know real five control rig comes with additional feature that are making the rig graph the, the editor closer to the blueprint editor we can finally embed functions and i'm going to try to show it today but the other thing i really like is that now if you if i drag a pin or right actually right click on it i can promote that pin to variable because prior to that you have to know that this variable type in order to create a variable so you had to you know create a variable here and then say I don't know what this type is what is that item is a rig collection would it be this this or that but in this way by promoting to a variable you know immediately know that this is a variable name or I don't know this is well this is this is a vector but for example this item here it's of item rig element key so these two things are you know uh, for me are really are making the, the work much much simpler and also it's it's a it's a much better way to um, to learn you know the variable types of these things and connect things together of course the biggie being you know the function so in, in in the previous graphs that I built in the previous video you can see that most some portions of the graphs are always the same thing but with different inputs but nevertheless I had to run it and I wasn't able to create a function to call it over and over again but now it seems like I can I haven't tried it yet actually so today I'm gonna take a chance just to, to say okay I'm moving to Unreal 5 so there might be stuff that is not there in Unreal 4.26 and 4.27 but also taking a chance just to talk about transform constraint and because I want to try to embed this in a, in a, in a function and um, so transfer constraint is seems to me like a direct um, a direct uh, the, the closest thing I can think of it's a weighted constraint or a parent constraint in Maya but there are certain things I've noticed um, so let's say I want to move this I want to move this control in between I want that this control always stays in between these two controls and also want to be able to offset so what I have is the control and a space so the constraint really will drive the space of it so the control is free to move but so when I started looking into transform constraint I've noticed two things the, it, it, it wants either a base transform or a base item so here's my interpretation of it the base transform if you want to drive a space or a control that's of type transform and you see it says use it uh, if transform space is base transform instead of uh, use if the, the transfer space is base joint and I believe that if you want to drive a joint you should use uh, you know the, the, the base item as a joint and um, and I believe instead if you want to use a control or a space you, you can use the bone transform the reason why that I think is that at least if I am correct which is always you know debatable um, I think it's because there is a difference of treatment between controls and transforms and spaces compared to bones and I think I am talking about that in a, in a few videos ago so the graph it's it's dealing with bones differently uh, that than uh, the control and spaces anyway this should work as um, like this you want to move this transform it could be a control or a space I want to be a space because I want the control to be able to free to move so you would plug the transform in base transform because the node type of this object is transform then you specify you, you know you specify the name whatever and then you you would take um, the first control add it as a target and the second you cl click on the plus button and you add this as a target now 
by default, sorry, by default these are to return to one. And this is the behavior that you get. You get, you know, the, the whatever original transform which is specified here, you know, and then the offset in between the two. So, and then of course the control is still free to move because in reality I am building, the, I, am, I am constraining the space. So, this, why it's weight, this weight, the way, the, the reason why this is now, it's, in, it's exactly in the uh, uh, half of it, and exactly in half, I don't mean that this object is at half uh, uh, the distance at the very beginning. It's preserving the ratio between this distance and this distance. So, like that, the reason why it's like that, it, it's, it's, I believe it has to do with these two weight values. So you can say that you know um, both are the s have the same weight. So uh, the object it's exactly moving between these two. Uh, a practice that other DCC application you know do in the past is to always keep this value normalized. Although I believe internally is normalized, but um, you know it w it, from a you know reading things point of view, if for example you move. You say the first transform move move the space uh, um, with a weight of 0.2, and the other one with a weight of 0.8. You still have the value normalized, but this this should mean that this object is moving more with the second object. It's still it's still a little bit driven by that, but less. Okay, so this is a standard standard you know kind of parent constraint with, with, with offsets. Of course you have the option to preserve the offset. If you untick that the object will snap in one position or another. Um, so this this operation here is, is something I want to try to build with you considering I never did it this inside Unreal 5. Um, I want to be able to build a function to constrain a point between two points and then being able to call that function. So I created a function here, and I'm going to plug the node here, transform, transform, constraint, and let's see. In theory, I should be able uh, to add inputs. Yes, exactly. I want to be able to add an, an input. an input of type transform and this is going to be base transform right and I want to be able to specify a name I guess uh, let's, let's add it here name The name goes into name, the transform goes into transform. Let's move that up so the lines are much, much cleaner. Um, so I want to specify a name and I, I want to be able to specify the type. Let's see if it allows me to do it. Uh, oops. So type, do I have a type here? Now here's where, for example, I don't know exactly which variable is. So if I promote this to variable temporarily, I can see that this variable, if it's enum rig element type, I didn't know that. So that's why this is. I think that's pretty pretty cool. Uh, uh, e rig element type. So this is type. Let's see if this works. So the other thing I want to do is basically not be, I want to specify two targets. So these are two more transforms. Oh, it's a very silly function, I know that. Uh, target A, target B. This, this can be way more, more smart, by the way. You can make a list and you can look between targets. This is just an example. So target A transform and target B transform. Now, and for the weight, I want to be able to drive both of these with one, one weight only. So 
So this is um, target a weight. So this will go. So let's say the user input 0 0.5. I want this to be 0 0.5, and then I want this to be 1 minus. So subtract, subtract the float. So if 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 the user inputs 0 0.2, this will be 0 0.2, and this will be z 1 minus 0 0.2. So it should be 0 0.8. Okay, so let's see if this works. Uh, and that should be it, really. All right, let me compile and see if I can, rather than using this thing, I can call this function, say, uh, const weighted constraint between two points. Cannot place function inside of itself or in the recursions. Fair enough. So right now I should be able to have to plug this and say <coughs> and say transform. This is my base transform. Is a space. The transform is this one. The name is let me see driven space the target A is this one and the target B is this one and now one minus zero it's one so it should it should work let's see if this works is it should be is it working? So this is moving far away, which means it's moving less because this weight, it's, I think it's 0 0.2 now, and this is 0 0.8. So if I change that to 0 0.9, it should get closer to the original target and move way less. And the same goes with 0 0.98, right? It means it should stay almost, when I move this one, it should stay almost still, but just move a little bit. So this is this is a function, and I hope this helps. I'm sorry, I really never tried it, so I, I was just guessing, but it's it looks like it's doing exactly what it's meant to be. So on my end is a big thumbs up finally, because it means that in your rig graph you can you can simplify things massively. You can create proper function to produce constant behavior, and then you use those functions everywhere along the graph. Okay, thanks.